Hi guys, thanks for joining me on today's episode. Today, obviously enough, I have a flat tire. And trying to be someone who can do things myself and take care of things myself, I'm going to go ahead and try to take care of this flat tire myself. First things we're going to have to do is pump this tire up. I'm close enough to my garage where I'm able to go ahead and pump this up with a compressor in the garage. If I weren't, I have a little uh, battery operated pump in my truck. It takes a long time, but it also gets the job done. So let's go ahead and get this tire pumped up and see where we go from there. Now right now it's not quite as important how much air pressure we have in this tire as that we have some in the tire so we can see where the leak's coming from. I'll show you how to take care of finding where the leak's coming from. Now that our tire's inflated, I've gone ahead and put some water in a bucket with some just standard dish soap in there. I've gone ahead and mixed it up real good so that it's good and foamy. I'm going to go ahead, take a little cup, and start pouring some water over the tire and seeing where bubbles appear. The dish soap is what's going to be helping the bubbles appear in this. And you'll be able to see it pretty easily as soon as I find the leak here. I'll show you. Make sure you pour it all the way down around the treads. And sometimes you might have to go around the bead in the tire as well. I can hear it. So I'm pouring water around the bead of the tire that has a soap in it to see if there's any bubbles forming around the bead where the rubber meets the rim. You're also going to want to take some and splash it up around where the valve stem is to see if anything's coming out from around the valve stem. Sometimes you can listen to it and, and track it down that way as to where you're hearing it bubbling from. I have a screw in my tire. And that is where the leak is, right there. Now for the next step. Now there's going to be a few basic tools that you're going to need to be able to take care of patching this tire. I've gone ahead and invested on a nice kit that costs about $10 at the auto parts store. Come on over, let me show you what I got here. Okay, first thing you're going to need is a pair of pliers of some type to be able to take that piece of hardware out of your tire. The second thing you're going to need is a tire plug kit. This is a nicer, higher-end tire plug kit that I got for about 10 bucks from the auto parts store. In it, it has a rasp that after you pull your uh, piece of whatever out of your tire, you can go ahead and run this in there to smooth it out and uh, make it so that your plug's going to hold well. It also has a very nice uh, plugging tool that gives you a lot more uh, power angle uh, to be able to push that into the tire, especially for the higher ply tires. This is really nice. Then of course it has the plugs that are necessary to patch your tires and it also has some rubber cement glue that you're going to need to be able to make that plug seal up well. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to pull that piece of hardware out of the tire and start to plug my, plug my tire. So I'm going to take my rasp, I'm going to take my pliers, and let's head out. Alright, I got my vice grips here. I'm going to go ahead and try to grab a hold of that piece of hardware and see if I can't get it out of the tire. Now as soon as I get it out, I'm going to start losing air pressure. So I'm going to go ahead, as soon as I get that out, and put this tool in to help plug the hole back up. Alright, I got a hole on that piece of hardware that's in there. I'm going to go ahead and try to thread it out since it is threaded. Oh yeah, there it comes. As soon as I get that out, it's going to start leaking quickly. Okay, now I have this tool gone and stuck in the tire. It semi-plugged the hole that this piece of hardware was in. This is all it takes to make your tire flat, guys. That's it right there. I'm going to go ahead and get the plug ready and put it into here. I'll show you how I'm doing it. Okay, one important thing that I forgot to mention as we were putting this in, you're going to want to make sure that you put this in at the same angle that the piece of hardware came out. So I have this in. I have the hole plugged up with this tool right here. We now have our piece of hardware out of the tire. This was a self-tapping sheet, uh, sheet metal screw there. So we got that out of the tire, we got our uh, rasp tool put in, now we're going to go ahead and use our plugging tool to be able to go ahead and get that tire plugged up. First thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and take one of these plugs out of the package. Now they are sticky, if it's a warm weather season, which it's not right now, you might end up getting these all over your fingers, you might want to throw a pair of gloves on. Next thing you want to do, take the end of it. Smush it down so it's kind of flat, and then you're going to thread it through the eye of this needle. Now 
I'm having some trouble trying to get that through, so I'm going to try to grab the end of that with my needle nose pliers and see if I can't help it through a little bit. There we go. Had nothing to grab a hold of. Now, once you get that through, you're going to pull it about halfway. So you got halfway right there, then you're going to take it and you're going to fold it over in half and make it stick to itself. Next step of what you want to do is you're going to take your rubber cement that comes with your tire plugging kit and you're going to put some on there. Now not only is this going to help seal up any uh, small holes around the plug, this is also going to help to uh, pr provide a lubrication as this plug goes into the tire. So you want to make sure that you put a decent amount on at the point where it's going to go in and then it can drag it down the rest of the way as you're pushing it into the tire. So I'm only putting it up here around that knot where it's going to need most of the lubrication to go in. Okay. That's it. Let's go outside and get this put in. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull this tool out and put my plug in that we've gone ahead and prepared. Now there may be a lot of air escaping, so we're going to want to go ahead and get this in as quickly as we can, but we want to make sure that we keep the same angle so that we don't end up making a new hole next to the old hole. So I'm going to go ahead, pull this out, and stick this right in. Now I have this started, we're only going to want to put this plug in so that it's sticking out by about a quarter inch on the end. So we're going to go ahead and push it down in there as far as we can. Okay, we now have it only sticking out by about a quarter of an inch. We're going to go ahead and take this uh, plug and we're going to turn it so that it makes a knot on the underside of the tire so it can't push back up and out of that hole. So we're going to turn it until it won't. the plug starts turning the hole. So we've got two, two turns on it. Now the plug is starting to turn in the hole. So we're going to go ahead and pull this straight up out. And that plug is in. We're going to go ahead and let this set up for a couple minutes. And then we can add some air pressure to this tire. Now because there's ample air pressure in there, to keep that knot pushed up against the bottom of the tire and not allow this plug to fall down in, we can go ahead and cut this extra that's sticking out off. We don't want this to get snagged on something if we spit on the ice and pull the plug out. Then we'll have an uh, empty hole again in the tire and the tire will be soft and flat in no time. So I'm going to go ahead and take a pair of cutting pliers and cut that off right flush to the tire. Okay, there's the extra plug and now it's flush and even with the tire. Let's go ahead and add some air pressure. Now in order for you to know what tire pressure you're supposed to run in your tires, you can either look on the side of the tires and go by that, or you can do something that's a little bit more accurate and go by what the vehicle specifics say. You can find this tag on the inside of your driver's side door. So you open your driver's side door up, and you're going to find it right there. Alright, so this is the tire pressures and the tire sizes that I'm supposed to have on these tires. As you can see, the rear tires, which is this, this line down here, says that I'm supposed to be running 80 PSI in the rear tires. And I'm supposed to be running 65 PSI in the front tires. It's important to stick to this. So let's go ahead and get those tires filled up. Okay, the tires all fixed, set, and ready to go. We're all done with this project. I'm going to ask you guys, if you've enjoyed this video, to go ahead and click the subscribe button right over here. By clicking that subscribe button, you're going to have instant access to all of my other videos that I have on my channel. There's a lot of tips and tricks and stuff that you can use to make yourself a little bit more self-reliant, self-sufficient, and save some money in your pocket, too. There's no need to call in the professionals when we can take care of jobs like fixing your tire on your own. Anyway, guys, I'm going to include some other links over here to some other vehicle tips and tricks that I've done uh, recently in a series. Go ahead and click on one of those if you're interested. And I hope to see you guys soon on my next episode. Until then, bye-bye.